Um, I just want to thank you guys all for coming. Um, what's today, Friday? Yes, it's a Friday night and you're spending it here. Thank you. Um, I want to thank AFI for supporting us since the beginning um, and supporting this film and having it here. I'm trying not to say much, but I'll just keep rambling. Um, but basically, like, we made this film with a lot of love and um, I'm fortunate to have some of the people that made it with me here and we'll be back at the end of the screening uh, if you guys want to talk. Um, and I hope you guys feel something. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome back to the stage the director of James White, Josh Mond. <laughs> we also have actors Christopher Abbott and Ron Lewison here with us. Before we start, Josh, I know there were some other of your creative team here that you wanted uh, to acknowledge. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Film Arcade, our distributor is here, Andy, uh, Miranda, uh, these guys have been doing every thing they said they were going to do, which is extremely rare in independent film and distribution, so I just wanted to give them a hand. <laughs> Two of my co-producers, Alexander Shepsman, and, uh, and uh, man, my brain is so fucked up, um, and, and Jake Wasserman are here tonight, and I just wanted to say thank you to them as well. Of course, the manager, the publicist, publicity team. I mean, there's so many fucking people that worked on this movie. They're just giving their love, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you. So. We're going to turn questions over to the audience in just a moment, but I'll start things off uh, by asking you, Josh. I know this uh, story stems from um, personal experiences of your own, and I wonder if you could talk about the process of translating that into this film. Um, yeah, uh, I, uh, I'm from New York, and I lost my mother four and a half years ago to cancer, and uh, I was raised by a single mother, and it wasn't, I, it wasn't easy for her, and uh, it, it was uh, complicated for me, and uh, I made a movie about something I needed to understand, and, and through the process I, I realized that I was desperate to connect with people, and uh, I've had these two partners uh, for 13 years, who are my brothers, and you know they were my teachers um, on this, and my coaches, and you know through working with them, I was able to to sculpt something that felt real to me, and brought in these great people to collaborate with to create and make it into a movie. Yeah, and I was wondering if you could talk about I mean the mother son relationship you created with Christopher and Cynthia is just so powerful, and I was wondering why. Christopher by Cynthia and what the collaboration was like in creating these characters? Uh, it was all really organic, everything in the film. Um, you know, Chris and I have known each other for about uh, five or six years. We met, you know, before Martha, and then we worked together on Martha, Martha, and Marlene, and we just instantly connected, and we've been friends ever since. Um, Chris, it's very strange, he's standing right next to me. <laughs> so, uh, I can leave for a little bit. No, it's fine. Um, just ignore you. Um, no, I, you know, there's something about, you know, Chris as a friend and why he's so, such a dear friend to me is there's a, he's just got a, a, an extreme amount of patience and, and, and soul and kindness and compassion for people. And, and also I think he brings that to the work. I mean, he, he's interested in, in, in human behavior, but he, he's also interested in the, the complicated. And, and, you know, I've always, I think we talked about it before the movie, one of the references from you was HUD with Paul Newman. And, you know, I think if there's anybody who kind of, you know, does it like him? It's Chris because you could take a, paper, a character on paper and be like, "There's, he's just, he's not redeemable in any way." And I, and I think, you know, what's human about it is that they people are so, you know, there's no one's entirely selfless and no one's entirely selfish, and you know that was something that I think he could he possesses is a love for the damage. And, um, you know, there's a shorthand with, with one another, and I felt safety in my first film, and, and also felt protected in my vulnerability. <clears throat> and with Cynthia, you know, Cynthia had read the script, and, and we just met to, like, assess each other out, and she shared with me that she lost her mom a couple months prior and to cancer, and, and she was from the Upper West Side, I was from the Upper West Side. It just seemed like her and my mom would have been friends, and. And her mother and my mother were like, you know, extreme liberals and very strong women. And, and Ron I've known for a couple of years and, and, and his wife. And 
mom's that kind of guy you just want like to hug every time you see him you know there's just this like you know like he knows what's going on but he doesn't care but he does and you know what I mean like he just um thank you for that that's been a long time um yeah, no, I just felt like everybody that came to the movie, nobody was doing it for the money, that's for damn sure. So, you know, it it just felt it just felt like there was everybody was doing it for the right reasons and, and it all kinda happened for a reason. And with Cuddy, I listened to his music while I was writing. Like I put it in the movie. <coughs> even by like, lyric by lyric. And I used to just listen to the melody a lot when I was writing and then I started listening to the lyrics and I was like, This dude's singing about himself. Like how brave. And uh and it just came up in conversation and an actor that we know, Mark Weber, I had worked with on my thesis and, and a director in college and uh, my partner reached out to him and asked him to get him the script and we just connected and we were, I felt like I met his friends, he met mine and it just felt like we knew each other's world. So that's kind of it. I wanted to ask Chris and Ron, there's such like a unpredictability and volatility from scene to scene in this film and I was wondering if that stemmed from kind of a collaborative improvisation or was everything kind of strictly scripted or how did these characters come about and how from scene to scene did they organic did they organically come about through interplaying with each other or um well I mean I think I mean a lot a lot was scripted a lot of it and if if there was any ad libbing or anything it was um you know the there was pretty strict guidelines w within the script you know and we would always kind of talk about it before and and, and figure it out that way. Um, you know, I, I mean, as far, I think as far as the spontaneity that I think comes across in, in the film, it's, um, you know, I feel like it's a pretty strong collaboration among everyone, not, I mean, not just actor to actor, but um, the, the tone and the world that Josh set up uh, with Matthias, our, our DP, and, you know, there, ev everything pretty felt it felt uh, pretty uh, like an open forum in that way, and everyone had a say. And and, and this is even people in, in every department. You know, I think I think every I think everyone felt like they had some sort of investment in it, and felt like you know th there wasn't much of a, a hierarchy in, in that way. Uh, you know, um, I, Josh did. Uh, you know, the, the great thing about Josh is that he's extremely skilled and and and, and talented and. And knows exactly what he wants, but he's not—he's not too proud to uh, um, not listen to anybody, you know. And then, not again, not just actors, anybody, you know. And and uh, I think that that encouraged an investment from from everyone on this on this film. And um, uh, I think you know it, it helped create the the entire tone of it in that way. I want to give the audience a chance to ask some questions. If there are any out there, please raise your hand wildly so we can see. Anyone? You look back there, way in the back. depending on the, the material you're working on. But for me, it's like I cast the movie crew and, and the actors based on who you felt safe to go insane with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'm very, I don't trust people. And I have a hard time trusting people. And so like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys live in LA, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but I just, but seriously, you know, it's like you have to be naked. I mean, I think meeting my editor, you know, I met him as a different person. I was completely vulnerable and completely insecure, and and like my facade was 
was totally wiped away. And it's interesting, we, have, we started our, like our friendship uh, in a very different place than I started with anybody in my life. And so, the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> Martha. Yes, right here. Um, for your cinematography choices, did yeah. you choose to shoot so close up for, I got the impression that there was no breathing room and so I felt like I was in this um, struggle and journey with Chris. Like what, what, what was the conversation like between you and your DP? Um, well, I, uh, I, 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 I started to like, I saw something in my head uh, and I explored on the short film. We did like an experimental precursor together called 1009. And I wrote, I, I explored the idea of being above the eyebrow and below the lip. And, and then I like, carried it over to the film, but I only had it in specific sequences, I think like two or three. And then Matthias uh, came over from Hungary like two months before shooting. And he's super experienced and, and, and very talented. and. He went way beyond the responsibilities of a DP, and he broke down the script with me, and we went into beats and 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 discussed the language, and he taught me about storytelling, and and we came up with a language to to simplify it, like just to use one thing, and through talking to me and understanding like the anxiety that I carried and my relationship with New York and how I couldn't run away from you know, the obsessive thoughts about what had happened and, you know, what's happening and how to process it. And so he just brought it out of me and, and that and then the language came. I mean, you know, there's multiple ideas. There's one of just, you know, establishing the subjective objective language first, like inside his head, outside his head. And then for the rest of the movie it's like you can pick your own adventure, you know, based on who you are. You know, either you're with him or you're following you know, or, or inside you know, in his head. And then also it, it reflected New York to me. You know, I say this a lot where it's like New York, if you submit to it, can be like a train that you just get on, you don't stop moving. Like, just reactionary as opposed to having a place for reflection. And it's also, you know, the claustrophobic nature and also the idea that you can never run away from yourself. So. I have a technical question, actually. Go ahead. I, I could have done it at the dinner earlier, but I you know we're here. Um, <laughs> How did you guys do that opening sequence that was so tight? Were you wearing a body cam, or is that just some really extremely good steady cam work, or what's how would how did that work? Do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. Because it was phenomenal <laughs> and extended, and um, I just that, yeah, that's um, that was as far as like the style of the entire film. I think that was the most intense version of it. Um, that was also, the opening sequence was also day one right. of shooting. Um, so we kind of dove, stylistically, we kind of dove right in in that way. Um, that felt like a, uh, like a performance art piece uh, is, um, that me and Matias were doing. Um, that, he, I mean, the camera was on his shoulder and, uh, and we were, you know, he was holding my shirt through some of it, and when, when I wouldn't move left or move right, I would tap him on the hip, you know what I mean, just because he didn't want to jump any of my movements. So, um, and and it's it's edited a bit, but it, I mean, we shot it all through the nightclub, through the bathroom, out into the street, into the into the taxi cab. It was, it was a fairly <coughs> long shot, and um, yeah, that was, uh, it, that, that in a way didn't feel like acting in a way. It felt like, uh, if that felt like the most dance-like, you know, more than anything. It was all handheld. It was all handheld. Wow. The whole movie was handheld. Yeah, yeah. Matthias operated. Thank you. Wow, yeah. I mean, the folk, kudos to the folks. Folks Polar. Yeah, yeah, man. That's uh, Corey. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have time for one or two more questions if we have more. It's right here. started like, uh, what is the year, 2015? 
Um, um, I guess it I guess it started in like 2010, maybe no, just yeah, 2010, 2011, and then I started to like commit to the idea that it was more about me right after she died, 2012. She died in 2011. So 2012, like, I started really digging into it, and uh, you know, we shot in 2013. Um, you know, because of the movies that I think we've made, we were able to attract people. If they didn't have the money, they were able to raise it because they knew the intentions behind it. So we, they all, they, they all came, they connected with the script, and they decided to fight for it. Um, I was very lucky with the people who financed the movie. And then, um, you know, we shot it in 18 days in New York, and then four, four days in Mexico. Um, and finished in, uh, I guess, January of 2014. And then I took a couple months off, waiting for my editor. We started editing in April, and then went to Sundance in China. So now I'm here. <laughs> and I want to thank Josh and Chris. And Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. We have one more question. Oh, okay. There we go. Relax. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. You're the buster. No, I'm not the <laughs> It's your show. Sorry. It was a quick one. Go Sorry ahead. about that. Right here. No pressure. Um, so I have a question about the fact that it was true. You know that it was true. Mm -hmm. How how hard was it in terms of what you remember experientially from your own life? Right. When it was happening on set, were you married to your memory of it? Like, you know, the shots were so specific, especially about the caretaking when it really got between the two of them. Right. Did you feel like you were more of a filmmaker, finding, like, cool shots, or were you working more with your memory of how you were in Christopher's character's body? Mm. You know what I'm asking? Yeah, no, I got you. I, 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 I it's weird, because it's not completely autobiographical. Like, my sister's not in the movie, my aunt's are in the movie, my mother had a great care, you know, great people caring for her. Um, so it's 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 a variation of stuff, and I kind of had to let go of my connection to it. Like I, I had to open up when I started to work with others. So when I hired my DP, one of the most important things is like it's, you know now it's James or this character, his name's Nick. It's not so and so. You know what I mean? And so you you start to let go, and once you start working with other people, it allows it you allow it to become theirs as well from their experiences. And, and then on the more technical side, there were like the bathroom scene. I saw, you know, I saw the visual of it, but I didn't see the blocking of it. You know, the actors changed the blocking of it. And then, you know, like it, it, I was open every day on set to for like more of the, the bedroom stuff. And as the shot shoot went on, to like I, my style would be like we would do rehearsal and then blocking, and then Matias would watch it from one place and I'd watch it from another, and then. The actors would leave the room, and then we would discuss what we saw, and then we would figure out which one should go first. You know, I was very open to that. Like that shot where she's sick and it's looking up at her, and then we repeat it on Chris. And when he gets the phone call, I mean, that was something Matias had brought up on the day, but we had discussed this painting that he really liked um, in pre-production. So it was just a, it was very organic, but it was it was difficult. It was like. I equate it to playing sports as where it is that is. Like when you go on the field, you're running on adrenaline and and you just have to fucking go and just go and then you don't look back. And uh, you know, I kind of would get perspective when I would look over at Sean behind my partner on, on the monitor and he'd be crying or like, Tony would be crying, my crew, <laughs> I'd be like, Oh, this is fucked up. <laughs> you know, like, what am I doing? Um, but you know, it was it was intense, man. And, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Be sure to look at your audience award. I know you're going to have a little longer on the way out. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> we really need your help. November 13th, the movie comes out in New York, and November 20th, it comes out at the art play. I will. Please we spread the word. And yes, we have another screen we'll here tomorrow. And there will be like special guest people doing the moderation, and we'll be there, and I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, can you head